Hey everyone, thanks for listening to the Grow Your Life podcast. My name is Jeremiah Krakowski and I help coaches, mentors, trainers, authors, and speakers scale their businesses to make two hundred to $500,000 a year and beyond in their business. But that's the starting point. I want to get everybody to that quarter of a million, half a million dollar level when they work with me. If you're listening to this, that's the goal. I'm not trying to get you to just make $500 to $1,000 a month in your business. I want you to be able to make a full-time income applying the strategies that I teach you. And that's why sometimes I'm going to challenge your way of thinking. That's what this podcast does. That's what my virtual events do. By the way, we have an event coming up here about launching your six-figure group coaching offer. Don't miss that. Check it out. And if you do miss that, be sure to go to my social media or my website at jeremichrakowski.com. We do events all the time where I walk you through how to actually create step-by-step a strategy and a system that scales a coaching business to multiple six figures. My wife and I, we've brought in over a half a million dollars in the last seven months in our business. And I want to show you how you can do the exact same as well. I'm excited. We're on track to a seven figure income this year. And this is the best year in business. This is the most money I've ever made personally. And I can't wait to go beyond this. I've helped a number of coaching businesses scale to eight figures. That's over $10 million a year. That's over a million dollars a month. But actually building my own business to that level has been incredible. And it's because of one thing. If you had talked to me four years ago and listen, this podcast is kind of a way to do that. You can go listen back to some of the previous episodes. When I first started this, honestly, I wasn't very confident in my ability to sell and selling. And I, and I really was jaded by the way that people sell in the industry. Funny enough, Episode number two, I actually break down the same sales system that I use today, but I'm so much more confident in it because I believe it is the most ethical way to sell to people without manipulation, without hype, without lying, really. I mean, let's be honest, a lot of sales and stuff that's out there is is lying to the customer and it's BS. It's terrible. I'm not going to promote something like that. And and I know that if you're listening to this podcast, you don't want a system like that at all. And so I'm going to be talking about sales from my perspective, my philosophy on sales, as well as how to get more sales in your business. We've been doing this a lot with our high level coaching group, and I want to help you with that as well. One of the first places that I have people start with sales, this book, The Way of the Wolf by Jordan Belfort, straight line selling. You might be saying, well, Jeremiah, I thought you were talking about ethics. He's not really the poster child for ethics. It's true. If you watch the movie, The Way, the Wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> he did not have the most ethical past. But what he teaches about sales is what I believe to be the most ethical system when it comes to sales. And everything that I do in my business is the foundations of this, plus what I've learned over the last 20 years working in the industry of coaching and online courses. And here's basically the foundation of it trust building. The reason anybody spends money with you is they trust you. They trust that what you say is true. Now you could con people by lying to them and being really good at lying and building trust in your lie. And unfortunately, whether you're going to do that or not, trust building goes both ways. If you're a person of honesty and integrity, which I hope you are if you're listening to this podcast, because honestly, I don't resonate with people that aren't, you you owe it to yourself even more to build trust with people. See, I see this happen a lot. People who operate with honesty and integrity don't want to look like the con man. They don't want to look like the manipulator. They don't want to look like the person who is sleazy and slimy. And so they're so worried about managing appearances, managing the mask they put over their face, managing their reputation and what everybody thinks about them. And then they don't sell because they're afraid of looking like the dude who's doing it unethically. I was this way. When I first started in my business, I was not wanting to look like those 
con artist coaches that are out there that, you know, they just, they promise results and don't actually deliver. And I was concerned that people would think that. In fact, I would get accused of it in my advertisements. People would be like, you know, there's no way this works, blah, 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 blah. And it would actually really bother me. And so I'm like, how can I make people not think this about me? How can I, the truth is this, <laughs> there's nothing that you can do to make people not think those things of you. There's always going to be a segment of people that are haters. There's always going to be a segment of people that do not like you. That's why the system that we teach is to qualify people around who is the best buyer to make sure that you have the right people that you're talking to. Okay. And we're not going to use hype. We're not going to use manipulation, but you do need to use boldness and courage and belief. If you have a system that can help people, I believe, and I'm just going to say this right here. This is for those that are in my coaching program, you know, this to be true for those that are not what I'm about to say might sound like hype because you're not in the program. We have the best coaching program to help you get more clients in the industry, to help you create virtual events, to get more leads on your email list, to get more coaching clients. And every single person who joins our program says that and they're getting results. And so I actually, with that being true, owe it to myself and the world to let as many people know about my program as possible, whether they believe it's true or not, whether they think I'm legit or not. That's none of my business. That's none of my concern. See, here's the problem. When we're concerned about how we look to others, when we're concerned about sounding right, doing the right thing, I'm not, hear me out. I'm going to say this. I'm not condoning that you defraud people. When I say to stop worrying about doing the right thing, I'm not condoning you actually go out there and do the wrong thing, but it's the mental concern about making sure that everything is just so with no deviation from how they should be and best practices. And, and this is the, the right, only right way to do it. The truth is there's no right or really wrong way of doing business. There's so many different ways of doing business. And that's why most people fail at business is because they're looking for the right one perfect way to do it when it doesn't exist. The only thing that is actually right is to launch imperfectly, to experiment, to be willing to take a risk and it not turn out how you want it to, to be okay with launching something out there and it not returning how you expected it. That my friends is actually the most and only right way to build a business. Yet most people are living in the fantasy land that they're going to finally find someday the one perfect method to do everything. And then it's going to finally produce results for them. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist on planet earth at all. Okay. So once you realize that you can go out there and actually build a business that makes money, that's, that's the shocking part of it. It's like Excalibur sword. You ever heard the story of, of the sword and the stone is that everybody thought it would take strength to pull it out when the very thing that would pull the sword out of the stone was not a stronger man. And that's how I've always likened business. There's usually contrarian principles. The thing that most people think is the most right thing to do in business often is not often is not. Maybe you're somebody right now and you're watching this and you're like, man, Jeremiah, I cringe when I watch webinars and people sell and I just like, it's so inauthentic and gross and disgusting. I don't want to be one of those gross and disgusting, ew, icky, yucky people. <laughs> well, guess what? You might need to challenge that belief about sales and about salespeople. And about what it means to sell and what it means to bring an opportunity to people that's going to help them. If you've been trying to build a business and you've not made any sales because you cringe at the idea 
of selling. That has more to do with your mindset and your belief system than anything else. Is because somewhere inside, there's a belief that you have that it's bad and wrong to do the things that salespeople do. And so you're looking for some Mickey Mouse, Disneyland, perfect version of, of how to make sales without doing the, the, the thing that makes you feel uncomfortable. And this is what I, I see happen more often than not in business. I was one of those people. I was so uncomfortable to do the things that it takes to sell. Because I had these thoughts in my head invalidating me, telling me that I wasn't good enough, telling me that I sounded like a, a scam artist, that I sounded like somebody that people couldn't trust, that I, was, that I wasn't somebody that people should do business with. Whatever these crappy ideas that we come up with our head and that, 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 that our, our brain convinces us of for why we can't boldly and courageously ask people to buy from us what we sell. The worst of all is, tr is trying to not sound like a salesperson. It's trying to not look like somebody, one of those people out there that does, like, like I, I see this. Uh, I'm not going to be like one of those people out there who sell like a slimy slime ball. <laughs> and yet they're broke. They're not making money. I meet them every single day and they call me arrogant, funny. When their level of arrogance will not even allow them to do what is effective to bring in sales. And I, again, I'm not asking you to, to do anything that you're, that is hypey, that is manipulative, that is slimy, that is sleazy, but I want you to challenge the judgments that you've made towards other salespeople, towards people who sell online. How you've seen yourself as better than them and them below you and how you would never do the things that they do to get sales. See, most of the, in fact, over 50% of the coaches that I meet have this stigma about sales and about selling and about salespeople and these standards that they've built up in their mind of, of, well, I will never cross that line to make money. I will never cross that line to look or sound or behave that way. Like those disgusting people. And that's, that's actually more than 50% of the coaches that I meet. It's really, it's sad because they don't know <laughs> that first off, you don't, that, listen, there's some slimy salespeople out there, but you might have to do some of the things that you judged as wrong and are uncomfortable for you to start to bring in sales into your business. And you might need to work on what are the beliefs between your two ears that tell you that those actions are wrong, that those actions are disgusting. Really challenge, I mean, I mean really start to sit with that. And if you watch me in my selling, I, I asked my wife this question today. I said, honey, do, do you think that I'm over hypey and manipulative in my sales pitch? She's like, absolutely not. She's like, I'd tell you if you were. Okay, great. For those of you that have ever watched me do a virtual event, if you're part of my accelerator, you can see me do this. I'm not hypey or manipulative in how I sell. But I am bold and I am courageous and I have a level of self-belief that is unshakable because I know that I know that I know that what I offer people works and it changes lives. And if I had even a shred of doubt in that, even a tiny inkling of not believing that, we wouldn't make money in our business. 
The level of income that you make is directly related to the level of self-esteem that you have and believing in yourself and then showing up and demonstrating that energy to people and not being concerned about what anybody thinks about you. Not being concerned about how you look or how you sound to anybody. I want to challenge you to do that. I want to challenge you to show up with boldness and confidence. Imagine that you were me when you go to sell. How would I sell your product? How would I sell your program? Think about that. And be bolder. And if maybe you're like, listen, I have no belief in myself, then you might need to work on what's up here that is telling you that you're not good enough for people to buy from, that your value is lesser than what people should purchase from, that people shouldn't have the level of respect for you or your time to buy from you, that that people should just use you and abuse you for your time because that's what they've always done your whole life. You see, does that make you feel good? Because if it does, you might need to challenge where people using you to make you feel good came from. You might need to challenge where you came up with the belief that people taking advantage of you means that you have worth. I had that belief for a long time. That my worth was directly proportionate to the level that people take advantage of me. I didn't make any money with that. I didn't think I was worthy of people spending money with me. I didn't think my time was valuable. I didn't think my time was worth what I was asking. Now, my time is actually worth way more than I'm asking. And I need to start asking more for it. And I will be in the next two to three months. I have a strategy right now to three to five X the money that's coming in in our business. And I will be charging a heck of a lot more for everything. And so should you. You should raise your prices. You should start charging more, not less. Start respecting yourself more. See, the reason why we don't charge enough is because we don't have a level of respect for ourselves And so what we do is we open up our boundary and we allow anybody to get a piece of us for nothing. When you can learn to start respecting yourself more and stop giving so much of yourself to everybody for free to find validation, to be liked by people, for people to tell you that you are worthy of love and acceptance by how much they use and abuse you and take advantage of you. And you actually start charging money for what you do. And you actually start asking people and say, and when people are saying, man, can I get a discount? You say, no, I'm sorry, I don't offer discounts. Man, can I barter with you for that? No, I don't barter for anything. Man, you're a jerk for not bartering. Man, you're an asshole for not, for charging money for that. You're not worth that. I've had people come at me and tell me that. Now I got a choice to make. Am I going to believe them or am I going to believe me that my worth is so far above and beyond what anybody tries to force into my head? What anybody else tells me that I'm worth. I got people all day long telling me that I'm worthless in my direct message. I got somebody, so many people, when I raised my prices to $30,000 for one-on-one coaching, ripping me a new one as to what a horrible human being I am for charging that much great. Let them. Not my problem. Not my concern. And it's not yours either. What other people think of you is not any of your concern. It's not any of your worry. It's not anything that you should be concerned about. Focus on the people who are going to get the most value out of your programs and then focus on who is actually buying from you and spending the most amount of money with you. And then focus on how can I deliver more results to those people? And that will change your life.
that will change your business. That will change how you look at yourself and the world. And you'll stop giving yourself away to people for cheap, for nothing. And you'll start actually asking people to pay your worth. There's nothing noble in giving yourself away to people. I'm sorry I'm going to say that. And I may offend some people. There is nothing noble in giving all of you away to people for free. You can have more impact and help more people by charging what you're worth because then you can start to advertise and you can start to hire people and you can actually start to work less and be more effective. Your content will actually get better when you're not the one doing all the work in your business. This solopreneur dream isn't really a dream once you're working 40 to 60 hours a week. It's time for you to start to charge more, make more money, and ask people to pay you what you're worth so that you can have the life that you actually want. You know, I'm so saddened by it. There's so many people. Constantly. There's people. They've listened to my podcast for five years and still cannot seem to get what I have just talked about for 20 minutes. Just, they just can't get it. They just can't get it. It just escapes them. Just <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Their priorities are somewhere else. They refuse to sell to people. They refuse to ask people to pay them money because they are so concerned about looking like a scammer, looking like a hype master, looking like a con artist, looking like one of those people <laughs> that they literally won't even launch an offer, won't put themselves out there, won't ask anybody to buy from them. And, and the saddest one is when I hear people say, because I want to impact people more. Your impact is not working that way. Start asking for the sale. Learn to get better at selling. We have courses and mentoring where we help you in my, in my coaching program to help you get better at selling. We have one of the best sales courses that exists out there specifically for people that struggle to believe in themselves with selling. What I've done is I've taken some of the best sales courses and I do. I do recommend you read this book. I recommend you grab it. I recommend you get the audio book. And, and start to become better at selling. You, the only way that you can actually make money in a coaching business is to sell. That's it. Like people give you money for your coaching. And you have to actually like build trust with them and lead them to buy from you. You actually have to make a connection with a person that needs what you offer and sell to them. But if, you're, if, if your brain is blocking you and you believe it's wrong to sell to people, you won't make any money. Because you won't do the wrong thing that you believe is the most wrong thing that I must always avoid. That's what your brain will tell you. Red flag, red flag, danger, danger, avoid this, never sell, never ask anybody to buy from you, always give away. And if that's what your brain is flashing lights doing, you might need to reprogram that part of your brain. Reprogramming your brain isn't a bad thing. We're always constantly reprogramming our brain. When you listen to a podcast like this, when you go through coaching, you are reprogramming certain parts of your brain that are not working towards your goals. If you are physically incapable of selling to people, that is an area of your life that is not serving you for your goals. It's just not. If you have a goal to make a half a million dollars, you've been trying for 20 years, but you won't sell and your brain tells you don't sell. It's bad to sell. It's bad. It's wrong. It's uncomfortable. People don't like it. I'm going to look bad. People are going to think bad things about me. And, and you operate from that framework. You won't make enough money for the next 20 years until you reprogram that thing inside of you that tells you 
that it's wrong and you get to the root and you identify where did I come up with this belief that I should never do the very thing that's going to make me money? Where did I come up with the belief that it's wrong to ask people to buy from me something and challenge that belief and challenge why you won't build your business. No, no, no. You're like, but Jeremiah, I'm building my business. I'm building my business. If you're not asking for the sale, you're not building anything. You're just wasting time on a time-consuming hobby. And that's the saddest thing that I see people do. They get leads on their email list and then they don't even sell to them because they're afraid of bugging people. They're afraid of annoying people. They're afraid of pissing people off. They're afraid of people unsubscribing. That's the funniest one. Well, I spent so much on those leads. I don't want to lose them. 50% of the leads that subscribe to all of our email lists unsubscribe. And I ask them to because they're not even people that are going to get value from what we offer anyways. They're just what we call looky-loos and in one ear out the next. They're not going to pay attention to anything that we actually have to say. But when you can start to work on what is that thing inside of you that's telling you, I can't sell? I can't sell. I'm too afraid to ask for the sale. I'm too afraid to ask people to buy from me. See, that's the thing. If you're afraid of a runaway Facebook ads bill, if you're afraid of losing all this money, I guess I get it. If you're incapable of asking for the sale, yeah, you probably will lose money. Because you're never going to make enough money to pay back everything else. Until you start behaving differently. Until you work on what is that thing between your two ears that is telling you it is wrong to sell. And you start to realize it's actually very right and very good and very ethical to ask people to buy from you and to be paid well and to be able to leverage your pay to grow a business, to hire people, to run advertisements, to reach more people. You got two choices to make. Are we going to keep operating in the framework of how you've lived your life for the last 20, 30, 40 years? Or are you going to start to do something differently that might feel uncomfortable at first, that might not feel natural to you, but that will get you so much closer to that goal that you have. To reach your goals, you're going to have to do some uncomfortable things. And I'm not asking you to do anything immoral or unethical. I'm not. But it will feel that way sometimes. In your brain, it will feel almost as if you're doing something immoral or unethical. Let me explain that. Like, you will, f your, your physiology... Your feelings inside of you, your body might get the same tension as if you're about to do something that you know you shouldn't, even though it's actually a very good thing to ask people to buy from you. That's what it felt like to me. I was so afraid to ask people to buy my coaching program. I was so afraid of how people would judge it. And we've gotten nothing but rave reviews from people. And yet I was still terrified, even six months ago when we launched it. Because I didn't think I was good enough. And it's only been recently that I've started to believe, you know what? Everybody else is telling me this. This isn't just a one-time fluke. I have literally had people tell me, I have gone through, and I'm not going to name names, but they did name some names. The top coaching programs on the planet and they're like, Jeremiah, yours is a hundred times better than theirs. It's humbling. It really is. It really is. Because I didn't think I was that, that good. At the same time, I, I've operated out of a spirit of excellence. And I've delivered the best training. This podcast is a labor of love. We don't have hundreds of subscribers. And yet every week I've stayed faithful to the episodes, delivering the highest quality content. And I've seen the effects of it. We've had people's lives are changed, making millions of dollars using what we teach. 
but I know that I can do more. And I know that I can reach more people. And I know that if every coach out there gets this and understands this and understands my message and understands how to sell better and works on what's between their two ears that is stopping them, the world will change and the world will be made a better place because of it. Listen, if you're a coach and you're somebody that knows other coaches that are out there, please share this episode with them if they struggle to sell. Please share this with other people. Consider getting on the waiting list for our grow your, our uh, client growth accelerator, our group coaching program. And start selling with boldness and courage. And start believing that what you offer to people is incredible. It'll change your life when you start seeing what you offer as absolutely incredible. Stop thinking about it as, eh, it's okay. It's okay. See, I had to start realizing that our program is absolutely incredible. Is it perfect? No, nothing's perfect. Nothing I do is perfect. So one of my number one things I tell people is you got to kill perfectionism. I posted this on my social media today. I'm saddened by people who never go after their dreams out of a spirit of excellence because a spirit of excellence and perfectionism kills more dreams than mistakes ever will. And you have to kill the desire to do everything perfect. The right thing is almost always never the perfect thing that we have in our mind. Do the imperfect, less perfect thing today instead of waiting for perfection to arrive tomorrow in your life, in your business. It'll change everything for you. And when it comes to selling, listen, you're not going to be perfect. You're probably going to flub it up the first couple of times and that's okay. But give it your best and work on what's going on up here to operate out of courage, boldness, and the highest level of self-belief. And you'll make more money than you ever imagined and help way more people in the process. Grow your life, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll talk soon. Have a good one.